Hello world, today I'm going to show you 8 Python techniques to make your code shorter and eventually condense your Python functions into one line of code. Do stay till the end for a special technique that can condense 99% of functions into just one line of code. Number 1. Omitting the new line character after DEF. So normally, when we write functions using the DEF keyword, let's say hello, we do this print hello. However, did you know that we can actually do this? So I'm going to remove the white space here, and this will still work. Let's call it, and let's run this, and it will still print hello. So doing this can save you one line of code. Number two, lambda functions. So lambda functions are essentially small anonymous functions that we can write in one line using the lambda keyword. Here's how the syntax works. Lambda inputs colon and output. So next, let's write a couple of normal functions first. So define hello and it takes in nothing and it returns hello. So this is our first function. And let's write another one. Greet name and return hello plus name. And define at let's say x and y and we return the sum of x and y. So these are three normal functions. And next, I'm going to convert them into lambda functions. So for hello, we can do this. Hello is equals to lambda nothing because it does not take in any arguments. And hello. And for greet, you'll be like this. Greet is equals to lambda. So because it takes in name, we have to put it before the colon. And here we put hello space plus name. So essentially, whatever we return in the function will be after the colon in the lambda function. Next, let's do the same for the add function. So add is equals to lambda. And here, because add takes in x and y, we do the same for the lambda function. So x, y, colon. And similarly, whatever follows the return statement will be here, x plus y. So this is another way to further condense your code into one line. Number three, using semicolons in place of newline characters. So to start off, I'm going to write a simple function, define hello, and I'm going to print a bunch of stuff. So print apple, print orange, and print pear. So this is a normal function that spans four lines of code. However, I can actually replace the newline characters with a semicolon. So like this, print, and here, I'm going to add a semicolon. And similarly, I can do the same here. And this will still function as per normal. So let's try this. And this will still print apple, orange, and pear. So replacing the new line with a semicolon can actually help save us quite a few lines. However, this technique will not work in if-else blocks or for loops. So do take note. Number four, list dictionary or set comprehension. So list dictionary or set comprehension is a technique in Python that allows us to create a list dictionary or set in one line of code. So I'm going to start off with a bunch of code that does not use list comprehension. So let's say I have a list of numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And I wish to create another list that will square all of these numbers. So essentially what we want to get is 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. So let's use the normal way of creating a list and then adding stuff into that list in order to create our new list. So let's start with a new is equals to empty list. And we look through our list for number in list. And for each number, we square it and add it to new. So new dot append number squared. And if we print new, we will get all of the numbers squared. And here we have it, 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. However, we can actually condense all of this into one line of code. So I'm going to use list comprehension next. So new is equals to square brackets and for n in this. And let's print new first. And here we simply get an exact copy of list. And that's why we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. However, since we want the squares of this number, we simply need to add the square operator here. So n to the power of 2. And we will get 1, 4, 9, 16, and 25. 
So this is list comprehension and this can condense whatever we have commented out here into one line. So similarly, if we want to use dictionary comprehension instead of list comprehension, we simply need to convert the square brackets into curly brackets. And we have to insert some sort of key value pair here. So let's say n colon to n to the power of 2. So if I run this again, we will get a dictionary where the keys are simply the numbers and the values are the numbers squared. And if I want to do set comprehension, I simply need to remove the colon. So there's no more key value pairs here and we will simply get a set. Number five, the ternary operator, which allows us to condense if else blocks into one line. So I'm going to start off with writing a normal if else block. So score is equals to 89. So if score is more than equals to 90, grade is equals to A plus. Else if score is more than equals to 50, grade is equals to pass. And else grade is equals to fail. And if we print grade, we will simply get pass in this case. However, Whatever we are doing here in the if-else block can actually be condensed into one line using the ternary operator. So I'm going to comment this out and let's use the ternary operator. So this is how it works. So grade is equals to A plus if score is more than 90. So this settles the top if block and else pass if score is more than equals to 50 and else fail and if we print this again we will get pass so this statement here that uses the ternary operator has essentially condensed this entire thing into one line of code number six method chaining which allows us to call multiple methods in one line so let's say we have a messy string and we want to convert it into a list apple orange and pear so first, let's do this the normal way without method chaining. So the first thing would be to remove the new line characters at both ends of our string. So list is equals to string dot strip. And afterwards, we have to convert the entire string into lowercase. So list is equals to list dot lower. And after converting everything to lowercase, we have to split our string by the spaces in between. So list is equal to list.split. And let's print list and see what happens. And we will get apple, orange, and pear in lowercase as a list. However, using method chaining, we can actually condense these three lines of code into one line simply by doing this. So after dot strip, we can actually add a dot lower. And after dot lower, we can actually add a dot split. And this will still give us the same result apple orange pair in lowercase. Number seven, recursion, which happens to be slightly more advanced. So recursive functions are essentially functions that call themselves. So after a while, I found that using recursion can be very helpful in condensing more complicated functions into one line. For example, let's say we want to generate the nth Fibonacci number. So Fibonacci numbers are this series of numbers that begin with zero and one, and each new number is the sum of the previous two numbers. So for example, the first two numbers, 0 and 1, will add to give 1, which is the next number. And next, 1 and 1 will add together to give 2. And 1 and 2 will add to give 3. 2 and 3 will add to give 5, and so on. So to write a function that finds the nth Fibonacci number, we can do it both iteratively or recursively. So let's try doing it iteratively first. So define Fibonacci number n so list is equals to 0 and 1 and for i in range n minus 2 list dot append the last two numbers which is list minus 1 and list minus 2 and we return the last thing in list so let's test this out and if we print this we will get a bunch of fibonacci numbers next let's try to condense this into one line of code so i'm going to move it here and here I'm going to add a semicolon. And next I'm going to convert these two lines into list comprehension. So this gets pasted here. And this gets pasted here. And after this, we need to have a semicolon. And next return list n minus one. So let's remove all of this stuff and let's check if our function still works.
and it does. So this is the iterative way of writing our Fibonacci function in one line of code. Next, let's comment this out and try the recursive way. So define fib n, n is less than or equals to 2. We simply return n minus 1. Else, we return fib n minus 1 plus fib n minus 2. So similarly, let's test if this functions properly. And it does. Next, let's convert this using the ternary operator into one line of code. Return n minus 1 if n is less than or equals to 2, else this recursive call here. And let's try again. And we still get the correct output. So notice how much shorter our recursive function is than our iterative function. And number 8, our special technique which uses the exact function. So to start off, let me explain what the exact function does. So exact, we will take in a string and it will execute this string as Python code. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So let's try this. And we will print 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because this string is executed as Python code. So let's write a simple function for this. So define hello, print apple and print orange. So let's say we have no idea how to condense this into one line of code. So we can actually do this using exec. So we simply write this exec and we first write the def function. So hello and next we have a print line and a bunch of spaces. Print apple. We have another new line and a bunch of spaces and we print orange. So let's remove this and check if our hello function works. And it still does. So no matter how complicated your function is, you can simply condense them into one line of string and you can use the exact method to execute the string, which will help you define your entire function for you. So using this cheat code, you can actually convert almost any function into one line of code. So thanks for watching and I hope you have learned at least one new thing about Python today.